Hey everyone, Evan the Paramedic Coach. I'm gonna be breaking down chest trauma into three main sections. Stay to the end, I got a skill for you. Hey everyone, Evan the Paramedic Coach. I'm gonna be breaking down three main subjects inside chest trauma. Stay tuned to the end, I got a skill for you. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, let's dive into it. Now I always tell my students, to understand any disease or emergency, you have to ask yourself four questions. Number one, you need to be able to explain it to me simply. Number two, what are the risk factors? Number three, what are the actual signs and symptoms? And number four, how do we treat it? So let's break this down now for cardiac tamponade. Cardiac tamponade is simply blood accumulation around the patient's heart that is most commonly caused by penetrating trauma. We have a sac around the heart, the pericardial sac. When it gets filled with fluid, the heart fails as a pump. So now we're gonna move on to risk factors. The risk factors of cardiac tamponade would be penetrating trauma. Obviously it's an emergency, and there's no medical risk factors with this. Now the next piece is signs and symptoms. So the main hallmark with cardiac tamponade is called Beck's triad. The triad means three, JVD, muffled heart sounds, and we have hypotension. Now to add a few others that are in that sign and symptoms mix, chest pain, respiratory distress, so difficulty breathing, right? And then also you can have a narrowing of the pulse pressure. Now the final piece, how do we treat it? So let's say our patient here has cardiac tamponade. We wanna give supplemental oxygen. We wanna get our vital signs. We wanna make sure we're doing cardiac monitoring. We wanna get IVs. We wanna maintain their blood pressure. The most important thing is getting this patient to a trauma center. That's where we're gonna be able to fix this cardiac tamponade. They're gonna do a procedure by placing a needle into the pericardial sac to remove the fluid. It is called a needle pericardiosynthesis. And back in the day, some paramedics used to actually do them out in the field. They're now in hospital. There it is. Now let's move on to tension pneumothorax. So let's say I have penetrating trauma right here to my right chest. Air from the outside world is gonna rush into my chest. What's gonna happen here is, here's my right lung, right? The air from the outside world is gonna come in and push and collapse on that lung. There's a lining of space around the lung called the pearl space. When air rushes in, it's gonna push on the lung, collapsing that right lung. And as the pressure moves over, eventually it will get to my heart, making the heart fail as a pump. In this case, we have a tension pneumothorax, right? We have air from the outside world in our lung cavity and it's collapsing the lung. That's a pneumothorax, right? Now, let's go back and check these out. Now we understand that piece. What are the risk factors? Well, the risk factors for pneumothorax, there's a medical and a traumatic side, actually. On the medical side, we can have a patient who's a very tall, thin, young man. That can actually be a risk factor for spontaneous pneumothorax. Now, on the traumatic side, it can be penetrating or blunt trauma that can cause a pneumothorax. Now, number three are sign and symptoms. There are some hallmark signs and symptoms. Okay, we still have JVD. So yes, there's JVD. Anytime the heart fails the pump, blood backs up, we have JVD. The second piece is gonna be hypotension, chest pain, difficulty breathing. But what's the two main hallmarks with tension pneumothorax? Well, first is a late sign. The patient's trachea will slide over to whatever side is being pushed over. That's a late sign though. What's the sign we really look for? Well, on the patient's chest, we actually go and listen to lung sounds. Whatever side is affected will have absent or diminished lung sounds. That's the big key. The other key you wanna look out for is tachycardia with hypoxia. And that is your tension pneumothorax sign and symptoms. Now, as far as treatment, yes, we're gonna give some mental oxygen. Yes, we're gonna do EKGs. Yes, we're gonna do IVs. Of course, the main treatment for this is obviously, if we have an airway issue, 
tackle it. But we need to get this air, air out of this that's trapping the patient. How do we do that? Well, we're gonna do something called needle decompression. We're gonna place a needle into that space so the air can escape and the lung can reinflate. So let's talk about that next. This right here is our needle for needle decompression. I'll move the cap. From there, I'm gonna take the next piece and remove, we have our needle, okay? So this needle is gonna go in the patient. What's gonna be left at the end of this is we're actually gonna have this plastic catheter inside the patient's chest. That's what we're gonna have, right? And this way we're gonna be able to expel the air that's trapped inside and then no more air will go in, right? Helping this patient with tension pneumothorax. Now the first thing we must do is find the correct site. Now as you can see here, there are two main sites for tension pneumothorax. The first site is the second intercostal space mid-clavicular line. That's a mouthful. All that means, go to the middle of the clavicle, go down one space between first, second rib, go down two spaces between second and third rib. We want to ride the top of the third rib and place the needle there. There's a lot of vasculature underneath the second rib. That's the main spot. It's not a bad thing. The only issue with the spot is we have a lot of great vessels on both sides. Now, obviously, on the, on the other side, we have the heart, right? So, a good thing to look at is the nymphal line we can look at and orient it. We don't want to be, let's say we're going on this side. We don't want to be on this side of the nymphal line. We want to be more over here, right? So, that's a general rule you can think about. Now, in the other location that we have is actually the normal location of a chest tube, which will be actually definitive care in the hospital for tension pneumothorax. Now, this is in a different location. You're actually going to go mid-axillary line, which is underneath the armpit, and then go to the third or fourth you can use intercostal space. Now, moving on from there, there are a few recommendations here. The first one is I recommend this exact needle, okay, a 10-gauge needle. A 14-gauge IV needle is not going to cut it, okay? A patient can have a built-up muscular chest or it can be an obese patient. The needle needs to be able to reach that space. This is a great recommendation for a 10 gauge. Now, the next piece here is we got to hear that we have a flush of air and we got to secure it with tape, right? And then the most important thing is reassess, reassess, reassess your patients. If you are someone getting ready for school, if you're in school right now or you're getting ready for your national registry exams, the first link in the description is lifetime access to my video study course. It includes over 420 videos of content plus access to ask me questions in our private community group. My friends, I will see you next time.